Hi, I'm Dr. Langley. I work here at uh, Pine Ridge Family Medicine in beautiful Colorado Springs. And something that I see year round, I was, I was going to say, you know, something I see during the summer a lot. Nope, that's not true. I see it during the winter when it's, when it's dry and crispy outside and makes your skin all dry and crispy too. And then spring and fall also I see a lot of rashes. So something I see year round all the time are rashes. And a lot of the time I can look at them or hear the, the story that uh, the patient tells me about them. And I can say, yep, I know what's going to make this better. But a lot of the times I don't. A lot of the times it's a, it's a rash that's not clear about what it is. Um, so it's, it's something that takes a little bit of trial and error. So I wanted to talk with you a little bit about that process, about how I decide what to do about rashes, about certain points that are important to think about and to share with your doctor and uh, to have kind of a, a game plan of, okay, make sure I hit all these topics when I mention this to the doctor, especially if you're rushed, especially if you're not in a direct primary care clinic where I can spend half an hour to an hour with my patients. Ooh. If you're looking for a direct primary care doctor, go ahead and uh, check out. There's a, a nice little DPC mapper. Uh, Google that and they'll be able to find one in your area, I hope. Anyway, back to our topic. Sorry, just love direct primary care. So one of the first things I'm going to ask about the rash is how long it's been there and whether it's changed over the course of that time, whether it started out looking like red bumps and now it looks like this white scaliness. That's a big difference. I want to know about that. Maybe it started out as just a little red spot that you hardly noticed and now it's these big blisters that are really, really painful. That's a big difference. So you can even take pictures throughout the progression of the rash just in case it changes because that's useful to have. Uh, I mean, we have all these pictures on our phone. Might as, add, might as well add some that are helpful to uh, your physician to figure out what's going on with you. Um, if the location has changed over the course of time, some viruses that cause cough and cold kind of symptoms can also cause a rash. It's called a viral exanthem. And they classically move in a certain pattern depending on the virus. So that's kind of a fun little mystery to figure out. I mean, it's one thing to say, yeah, you have a virus. You'll get over this soon. The rash will go away soon. Um, and it's another thing to be able to say, you have German measles because it follows this pattern from here to there and there to here. And uh, if you can keep track of it, that's kind of fun. Um, other symptoms that are associated with the rash. Does the rash just sit there and you hardly even noticed it? Or is the rash really itchy? Or is the rash painful? Is the rash bleeding or tingly? All good things to note. Um, ask your family or friends that you've been around to see if they have something similar. Did you all go camping and all came back with this blistery rash that really, really, really itches? I want to know about that. Uh, are you all living in the same house with other people and your kids have the same kind of itchy spots all over their, uh, their bodies um, and you have them too? That's important to know and that can help point me in the right direction. And in general, are there things that seem to have made this rash better or worse? Every time you go outside in the hot weather, does it make the rash a lot worse? Every time you exercise, every time you scratch yourself, does it make a big red welt across your skin? Um, or things that make it better? Does it make it better to uh, sit in a, a hot tub or sit in a, in a warm bath for a while, more likely? Um, that's another one, though. Did, did you get this right after sitting in a hot tub that was perhaps inappropriately treated with chlorine or bromine? That's not a good one. I mean, it's easy to treat, but it's really uncomfortable in the meantime, and it's kind of gross to get a rash from a hot tub. But it's a, no judgment if you have. seen plenty of those, too. Um, what else could make it better or worse? Sometimes heat, like a hot pack on the skin, makes it better or worse. Sometimes an ice pack makes it better or worse. And also think about any new exposures that you have, both uh, places you've been, places you've slept, as well as new products that you're using on your skin, new shampoos, new laundry detergents, new soaps. Uh, I, I very rarely see anything related to new soaps and things like that. Um, it's usually uh, something else, but uh, something to think about as well. And say you go through all this and you can't figure out what in the world is going on and you just want to start with somewhere, which is, is generally a reasonable thing to do. Um, if it's not bleeding or an open wound or uh, big blisters, then it would be, and it's just a, a little red rash that's kind of bumpy and sometimes itchy. It's reasonable to try something a little bit over the counter. Um, you could try, basically there's two routes to go. There's the steroid route and the antifungal route. 
So ringworm, I know it sounds like there's a worm under your skin and it's really gross, but it's not. There's nothing to do with worms. I know it's a terrible name, but it's a tinea infection, a fungal infection, a fungus, just like a mushroom. There's fungus everywhere all the time, just like there's bacteria and viruses everywhere all the time surrounding you, especially bacteria. And there's good and healthy bacteria to have in your skin and your gut, and there's good and healthy fungus to have on your skin and in your gut. But then there's also fungus that gets in away from itself and starts causing problems. And so using a, a topical antifungal cream that you can buy over the counter, check out what they have at the local pharmacy is definitely a reasonable thing to try doing. Usually you have to apply it twice a day for about two weeks to see any difference. And that's usually for an itchy red rash that you can't think of any other reason for. Say you have an itchy red rash that you uh, try that antifungal on and it doesn't get any better or you just want to, don't want to try the fungal route, you want to try the steroid route, that's an okay way to go too. So hydrocortisone is a, or just cortisone is a common over-the-counter steroid medication, steroid cream. Put that on your ash. See if anything changes. Fun fact, <laughs> if you actually have a ringworm or fungal infection and you put the steroid on, it might get a lot worse because the steroid kind of turns down your immune system, assuming that it's uh, a slight, slight eczematous or psoriatic rash. Um, so you, that's the time when you want to turn down your immune system. But if you happen to, to guess wrong and you use a steroid on a fungal rash, the fungus will kind of take over a little bit more and it can get worse. Sorry about that, but it's not like it'll kill you. Uh, and uh, it'll make it more itchy and more red and maybe spread to a larger area. And that'll tell you, ooh, this steroid is not a great option for me. Let's stop the steroid and consider seeing your doctor. This is assuming that you can get in with your doctor very soon. Sometimes there's a long wait, especially if you're not in direct primary care. Uh, and there's other techniques that doctors can use to try to identify what your rash is. They can shine a special light on to the rash and a fungal rash will light up. Kind of cool. And they can take a little scraping of the skin and look at it under the microscope or send it to a lab to evaluate for what's causing it or even take a biopsy. I mean, sometimes we never know about what's causing a certain skin condition until we take a little piece of it and send it to the, the pathologist who can freeze it and slice into the little pieces and look at it under the microscope and really evaluate for what kind of cells are in there and what they're reacting to and what are they doing. So the, hopefully that gets you to a, a good start with what to do with this rash. Um, it's always, it's generally a good option to also put on um, ointments, emollients, especially if you live in Colorado and everyone just has super dry skin, which leads to, to more fungal infections and bacterial infections because it breaks down the skin and lets bad things in. Hopefully you found that helpful. Um, if you're interested in this, you might also be interested in watching this video and be sure to subscribe to my channel as well so you can keep getting updates on when I come out with something new. And thanks for watching.